If you've been thinking about starting a reaction channel, but you have no idea where to start, how to make sure your channel stands out from the other ones, the cost of getting up and running, the pros and cons of doing different types of reaction videos, dealing with the copyright issues, or just how in the world are you going to get people to click on and actually watch your videos, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to go over all that, plus I'm going to walk you through my exact setup step-by-step -step, and show you how you can film, edit, and upload a video in just under two minutes. So with that out of the way, let's get it going. Okay, full transparency, it was not that long ago that I was on YouTube myself looking at videos on how to start my own reaction channel. And while I did find some of the information useful, I have to admit there was a lot of stuff left out that I felt should have been mentioned and could have saved me a lot of time and energy had I known ahead of time. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, I would say the majority of what I learned came from my own hands-on actual experience of trial and error that got me from these numbers to these numbers in like just a few months. Okay, so now before we look at all the stuff that it takes to start and run a successful reaction YouTube channel, I feel like we have to first understand something that the word successful or success is highly subjective, okay? So what does a successful YouTube channel look like to you? Okay, for me, I wanted to have a community of positive people that enjoyed watching my content and I wanted to get a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time so I can become monetized. And I feel like I accomplished both of those things in a lot faster timeline than I thought possible. Okay, so what are your goals for your channel? I want you to actually write in the comment section below and get some ideas from other people too, bounce out of each other, like stay positive, okay guys, stay positive. And one of the main reasons I want you to write this down is because I want you to have something to look at when times are tough and you kind of forget why you're doing this in the first place because I'm going to spoil something for you. Your spoil alert, having a YouTube channel is not all sunshine and rainbows, okay? And that's actually a good thing for you because while it is tough for most people to gain momentum on their channel, although this video will help you get your channel up and running, I feel very easily, the truth of the matter is most people quit their YouTube channel way too soon, which makes it that much easier for you to snatch up not only their audience, but all the money they're leaving behind too. You know, it's kind of like an ex who leaves you for some loser and then runs into you a few months later, but now you're with your new, better, hotter soulmate, and they're all like, I don't know what I was thinking, I miss you so much. And you're like, I bet you do, peace out loser. You get the picture. Now this actually leads perfectly into the next step, which is why do you want to start a reaction channel to begin with? Now I know that that might sound unimportant or irrelevant, but I promise you that it is more important than you realize. Because the truth of the matter is, I feel like a lot of people who watch content like this either never start their channel or they quit way too soon. And I usually find that's because of one of two reasons. Either they didn't have a clear goal for their channel, you know, something like to aim for, or they didn't have a strong enough reason as to why they were starting their channel to begin with. You know, they didn't have any fuel. So what's your why or your fuel for starting your reaction channel? For me, it was really easy. I had two reasons why. One is I already liked watching reaction channels. So I was already passionate about it to begin with. And the second reason was, I really didn't see a lot of channels out there that had anyone like me, so I felt that that could help me stand out. How about you? Do you already have like a few reactors that you really enjoy watching? <coughs> me. Do you see anybody like you on YouTube? And by the way, when I say like you, I don't mean just like looks. Like for me, for example, it was a combination of looks, personality, and even insight as I really didn't see a lot of people reacting to comedy videos that had actually ever done stand-up comedy before like I had. I had done it for over 10 years, so I felt that that gave me a special insight, and I felt that that helped me really stand out amongst the sea of other reactors out there. So what about you? What are your reasons for starting your channel? Remember, it's really, really good if you write this down. Okay, so what kind of content are you going to react to? You can react to music videos, stand-up comedy, uh, movie trailers, movie bloopers, compilation videos, and so much more. And they all have their pros and cons, which we'll get into a little bit. And there's a few ways you can decide on what's best for you to react to specifically. But before we get into that, I have to make sure something's very clear. What you react to is not the most important factor to your channel success. The most important thing to remember is reacting isn't enough anymore. A few years ago, you could watch an entire movie clip or music video and just smile the entire time, nodding away, and that would be it, and that would be totally fine, but not anymore. YouTube has really changed on what it will and will not allow as far as reaction channels go. So you need to change the way you look at reaction channels. Instead of it being 100% reacting, you need to think of it more like 50% reacting, 50% commentating or commentary. So keeping that in mind, you need to think about two things when you're figuring out what type of videos you're going to react to. The first thing is, what kind of videos create an emotional response in you? And what kind of videos can you talk about for hours and hours? Now this is key for a couple reasons. Firstly, this will help you add commentary to your reaction videos, which will help you deal with copyright issues, which we'll get into a little bit later. Also, your commentary will clearly define your perspective or your point of view on your videos, which perfectly leads to the next step. Okay, so how are you going to stand out on YouTube? Well, there's a bunch of different ways we can go about this. The first way I would say is, do you have any past experiences or occupation that you can play in a part here? Let's look at some examples. So right here we have a vocal teacher who reacts to singers, which makes perfect sense. 
or there's a therapist here who does reactions that reflect on therapy or mental issues. Now, if you consider yourself an outsider, then you can always go about it with a fresh or new perspective on things. Like a bunch of these are foreign people reacting to American things, you know, American comedy and stuff. You can also do the reverse of this and be an American who reacts to foreign things. And any type of first time watching videos will always do really well, so just keep that in mind. Now, would you say that you have a unique set of beliefs or a uh, way of looking at things? Because if you do, there's so some ways you can stick out here. So like if you uh, believe in ghosts, for example, you can always react to scary clips. I would also say if you uh, believe in conspiracy theories and stuff like that, you can definitely react to that kind of stuff. It usually tends to do well on YouTube as well. Okay, so those are just a few ways on how you can approach your channel. So you need to think about this. How am I going to stand out on YouTube? And if you have no idea none of these really apply to you at all, then I would say just look at someone's reaction channel that is reacting to the type of videos that you want to react to and then just use that for inspiration and ideas okay so next you might be thinking all right how much is this going to cost me to get going and the honest answer is absolutely nothing provided you at least have a laptop and a cell phone and there's actually a way that you can do this without a cell phone and i'll get into that a little bit but first let's look at the program that you're going to use that's really going to save you a lot of time and energy Okay, so this is OBS Studio. This is completely free to use. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can download it. I highly recommend you do. And I'm going to show you later on in the video when I'm doing my setup of my two favorite features with OBS. But it's definitely great. Don't be misled because it's free. It's an awesome program. You guys are going to love it. Now, based on what you currently have at home and the quality of the videos that you're trying to put out, you really have two different options for how to do this for free. Okay, so your first option actually comes down to the quality of your current webcam, assuming you have one. If your current webcam is actually really good quality, then that's all you really need and you don't even need to use your cell phone. But if your webcam is not the greatest quality, then I would suggest going to option number two, which is to use your cell phone. Now, you can actually use your cell phone as a webcam using both an app that I'll show you where to download in the description below and also using the OBS app, which we already talked about earlier. And assuming that's the route you're going to go, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below of a video that walks you through how to connect the app and your phone to the OBS program, just in case. It'd probably take you about 30 seconds. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the pros and cons of doing different types of videos. First, let's talk about music videos. So some of the pros of doing music videos are usually tend to get a lot of views and a lot of subs from people that are fans of the video that you're reacting to. And they usually tend to have a really good shelf life. The cons are that like 99% of them you cannot monetize because they're all copyright claims. And it's harder to build up that watch time because a lot of the music videos are around three to four minutes long. So you're going to take have to do more videos to really build up that watch time. Now for one of my favorites, which is stand-up comedy. Some of the pros of doing stand-up comedy is they usually tend to be a little bit longer clips, which helps build up the watch time. And if you get one that's really popular, it can really boost your views and subscribers. And they usually tend to have a pretty good shelf life, assuming you pick a, a video that people are into. And the only real con of comedy videos are it can be kind of hit and miss with copyright claims. And if you don't get a video that has real popularity to it, it really won't get a lot of views and subs. So kind of uh, do your research on those before you do those. Now let's talk about movie bloopers. One of the pros of those is they usually tend to be really long, which again helps build up the watch time. And as far as monetization goes, a lot of them are monetizable. And the only real con I found with bloopers are there's not a lot of quality ones out there. So once you run through the batch of good ones, then you're going to kind of struggle to find more good ones. Now, when it comes to TV and movie trailers, there's only really one pro to them. And that's if it's a really popular show or movie, you're going to get a lot of views and subs from it. But the cons are almost all of them are copyright, so you won't be able to monetize any of them. And they're usually only popular for a short period of time. So you got to jump on them when they hit and then just expect the views and subs to dwindle down shortly after that. And last but not least is compilation videos. One of the pros of these is they usually tend to be longer, which again helps build that watch time. And I found that a lot of them are actually uh, monetizable as well. So that's always a plus. And the only real con I found with those are a lot like bloopers, which is there's a limited quantity of those out there. So once you run through your initial batch, you might struggle to find more unless you want to hire someone on Fiverr overseas to like help find videos and piece them together for you and create your own compilation videos. That's always a way to go as well. OK, so now let's talk about copyright claims real quick, starting off with things to look for to see if you might have issues with certain videos or not. And I think the number one thing you should do is look at if there's other people that have reacted to something you're planning to react to with just in the last few months. If they if you find a lot of people have reacted to something and it hasn't been that long ago, you're probably going to be okay doing it yourself, although there's always exceptions to the rule. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually download the video yourself from YouTube that you want to react to and then re-upload it just without you doing reaction to it. Just re-upload it to YouTube yourself. Put it to private. Don't put it on public because you might get in trouble for that. And then see after YouTube passes through its checks if it says there's any issues with it or not. And then you can determine from there if you want to react to it or not. Which leads me perfectly into the next phase, which is the different types of copyright claims, copyright strikes, fair use and all that jargon that you're going to probably need to know if you're going to do reaction videos. Now, to my knowledge, there's actually four different kinds of copyright claims, which is what you're probably going to get most of if you're doing reaction videos. 
The first one is the video owner lets you use their content exchange for getting stats on the video, which is like the best case scenario. They just want to know stuff about the video. The second one, which is the most common one I found is the video owner will allow you to use their video, but they're going to run ads on it and they're going to collect all the money from it. So you're not going to make a dime from it. You might get some views and subscribers from it, but money not happen. The third type of claim, which I've actually found is pretty rare, but it does happen is the video owner will allow you to use their video and exchange when you run ads on the video, they share some of the money with you. So like I said, it doesn't happen a lot, but I've had a few videos where this has happened. The final type of copyright claim that you will get if you do reaction videos, and this is by far the most annoying one, <laughs> is the video owner will just straight up block you from being able to post a video on YouTube. Now, if this does happen to you, you can dispute this using fair use, which is why I said earlier, it's so important to make sure you have commentary in your reactions because that falls clearly under that umbrella of fair use. And if you're not sure how to actually dispute a claim, do not worry, YouTube makes it really easy. Whenever they tell you that a video is blocked or whatever, it literally says, would you like to dispute this? And you click the button and it walks you through the steps. It's really easy. And just to be clear, just because you're disputing it doesn't mean it will get resolved. Even if you made sure you commented throughout the entire video, I'm just warning you ahead of time, it might still not pass YouTube's checks. And if that does happen, you really have two options. You can just throw away that video and put away all the time and effort that you put into it or Patreon. Now, I know a lot of reactors love using Patreon for this probably exact reason, and it is a great platform, but just remember that if you do decide to go that route, that they will take 5 to 12% depending on which plan you pick, so kind of keep that in mind when you're deciding what you're going to charge people to become a patron of your channel. And the second thing is, is you want to keep the content fresh at least one video a week, if not more. Okay, guys, so it's time to talk about that dreaded thing that no YouTuber likes to say out loud. Copyright strikes. We got to get into it, okay, guys? Now, there's two majorly annoying things when it comes to copyright strikes aside from the strikes themselves that we got to talk about the first thing is is when you get a copyright strike you usually get notified via email and it usually tells you the issue with the video and why it got a strike but the problem with that is is once you get a copyright strike they automatically take down that video so unless you have a copy of it you have no way to look at that video and see really what they're talking about in case you don't know and also i really feel like they would like just give you a chance to edit out the portion of the video that's copyright strike if it's obviously not the entire video because i know that there's videos that have gotten copyright strikes where it was just a small portion of the video but because that portion of the video got a copyright strike the whole video gets a strike versus them letting you just edit that part out and the second most annoying thing about copyright strikes guys is they can happen at any time i know reactors that had videos from years ago get a copyright strike they went for years without any issues and then bam all of a sudden copyright strike there is no timeline where you're safe okay at any point in time you can get a copyright strike. And here's the scary part, guys. If you get three copyright strikes, you're out. They delete your channel and they take away all your monetization. So any money that your channel was making is now gone forever. This is actually the best and main reason to find a niche outside of reactions to base your channel on. Because for one, not only will you not have to worry about copyright claims or copyright strikes or anything like that, but because it's your own original content, 100% of the videos are monetizable and you can make money from. Because just to be honest with you guys, full transparency here, my reaction channel right now, I would say about 40% of the videos I've done, I'm getting money from. The 60%, the majority of the videos I put time and effort into, I'm not getting a dime from. I got subscribers and views, which is great, but money, nada. And I'll talk more about the best niches to get into in another video. But for now, let's actually talk about how you're going to get people to click on and watch your videos. Okay, guys, so one of the biggest factors to get people to actually click on your video, hope this isn't going to be a shocker, is thumbnails okay thumbnails are so important guys and no i'm not talking about these thumbnails okay i'm talking about these thumbnails and now you basically have two ways of going about these thumbnails you can build them from scratch like i kind of do on my channel you can see some of them below or you can do them like this which is i want to point out something very important on these thumbnails here okay they are picking moments where their expressions are big remember what i said before big reactions okay so make sure if you're going to go this route that you pick a moment in the video where you have a an extreme expression on your face whether it's sadness or or excitement just make sure you pick a moment like that that you're going to use as your thumbnail okay so next we're going to talk about your intros and your outros guys this is really simple okay keep them both as short as possible okay i stunk at this in the beginning i didn't know and my retention suffered because of it and i'll show you examples in a minute but just remember guys, they're there to see your reaction, okay? They don't care who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as you love me, baby. Sorry, 90s flashback. They just want to see the reaction. Now, that doesn't mean you can't talk about yourself. Of course you can, but it has to be during the video and it has to be relevant to some to what you're watching, okay? And same thing for your outros. Keep your outros short. If the, the closer that you can have 
the end of your video be the end of the video you're reacting to, the better when it comes to retention. If you don't, you're gonna see your retention drop off drastically because once the thing you're reacting to ends and the more you talk after that, you're gonna see your retention just drop, okay? So take it from me, I'm gonna show you an example of mine and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's one of my earlier videos where I was horrible at this. Look at this intro. Look at how many people jump off because I'm talking too much before the video starts. And then look at this huge drop off after the video because I decided after the video was over, I was just gonna ramble off for five minutes about what I thought about the video. Don't do this guys. And look, no YouTube recommendations. Now look at this example. Look at, kept the intro short, hardly any drop off, okay? You're gonna have some drop off, but hardly any. Then look, it stays pretty consistent throughout. And then look, because I ended my video where the video I was reacting to ended, hardly any drop off at the end, which, look at this guys, look at my YouTube recommendations. YouTube was recommending my video to more people because my retention was a lot better. So just keep that in mind, guys, when you're doing your intros and your outros. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through my exact setup here. It's going to be a little bit different than it usually is because I'm actually using the camera and the stand that I normally use when I'm doing reaction videos. But I'll point out where they put them and how they're set up when I do this. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this is my setup, guys. Here we got a basic ring light here. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. It's really cheap. And if I remember, I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Don't be concerned with the audio equipment here, guys. I do record a podcast, and that's what this stuff is usually uh, used for. But if you guys want to, you guys can always use it. And unfortunately, you can't see the stand and the camera right now because I'm using it right here. But the stand and the camera usually right here pointed at me at an angle. What I'm watching on screen is right here. And this all connects to the OBS program, which I'm actually going to share my screen with you right now so you can see how it all connects. Okay guys, so here we have OBS Studio. Make sure you get OBS Studio, not OBS Streamlabs. I will make sure to leave a link to it in the description box below, but just make sure that this is the version you get. Um, two of my favorite features on this program, without a doubt, are the record button and picture in picture. I believe in setting yourself up for success and I feel like with this simple and fast production process, it guarantees you less excuses to not record. Because let's face it, we can all be our worst enemy sometimes and I think it makes it easier to just get out of your own way in this case. And so now I'm gonna actually set up a secondary camera here so I can actually demonstrate for you how I can record, edit, and upload a reaction video in under two minutes, I hope. Fingers crossed here. All right, wish me luck, let's go. And if you guys notice, I actually made a couple mistakes and I didn't have programs already up and running when I should have. So that cost me a little bit of time right there. But hey, not too bad, right? And that's it. It's really that simple. Now, if you want to learn more about the best niches to get into where you can actually make money from them and not have to worry about copyright claims or copyright strikes, then you're going to want to check out this video here where I really go in depth on the subject.